at the start of my life, really, I was homeless uh, from the age of 13 to 18. Um, yeah, I just lived on the streets, a bit rough and things like that. This is one of the places that I used to, to stay when I was homeless. And, you know, we, I, I was raised here in, in Hollyhead. And what you gotta appreciate, my my mum was a living a living mother. She was living, she was caring, she really was, but I was just so hard to live with. Every opportunity I got to run away, I did that. And I even at home I punched holes in the walls, so I was just that horrible little child that you think about, I was that and ten times worse. And and equally, I've come from this sort of like angry little lad um, living on the streets for, for a period of time becoming more angry and more hateful towards people because I thought like you know everybody had a vendetta against me and obviously my hygiene and the way I was living didn't fit in with the modern world if you like in, in that respect and um, yeah it, it, there was times that I thought no, let's, let's, let's just call it a day, let's, let's just, let's roll over. But there's just something inside me that I just like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to get defeated. We could do this. Um, and as the years went on, the harder it became. Because um, I just thought, well, this is me, this is, this is, this is what I'm worth. So yeah, we, we, you know, just finding little places like this with a bit of shelter. A bit warm for each night just to keep myself going was was paramount to me. It, it just seems a bit. You got your shelter. I'd have like a, just some sort of <coughs> tarpaulin on the front just to stop that sort of wind. And this would be me most of the night then, just in here. And I think that's you know each day <laughs> it was it was fine in a bed like this so I can get to school in the morning. I still went to school uh, for the simple reasons that I had a hot meal. That, that, that's the genuine downside. If it wasn't the free school meals, I don't think I'd have had an education. You know, like you're saying, you, you're going in stinking of bins or the places that you slept the night before, not being able to have a wash for over a week or so. Yeah, it was, it was hard. I got myself involved um, with the old Hollyhead uh, Opportunities Trust. And they had um, a climber there, and then a support worker called Martin Rickard. That's what got me into the into the outdoors. Really, was was him, and he put me under his wing. And rather than sit in times in, in spaces like this, um, I was out climbing and getting getting familiar with what life was really about, rather than trying to survive. And, um, I went to a thing called Working Links. So I've gone there for my um, for my forklift license, if I'm honest with you. And uh, my old, one of my old support workers, she said to me, well, what, what are you doing? You're climbing. You know, at the time, it was um, a rich man's sport, really. I mean, I couldn't afford the kit, couldn't afford the training. Um, so I said to her, you know, it's, it is what it is. You know, I just, I can't afford it. And she was, well, have you heard of the Outdoor Partnership? I hadn't at that time. So uh, she phoned Simon Jones up from the Outdoor Partnership and he came up and uh, he had a chat with me. Simon Jones offered me a gateway to employment through the Outdoor Partnership where we had um, one day a week um, just doing different various of activities really. Um, and again like my, my, my situation didn't make that any easier for me. Like I, say, I was living rough on the streets and things like that here. So the um, at times, you know, I, you know, most times I got to Bangor okay, 
but there was a few times that I've had to walk from here from Hollyhead uh, to get to the course and do it. I knew it's what I wanted to do and it was free. Nice job. See you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just broadened my mind so much because you can imagine like, you're going through the streets, uh, being almost uh, dotting on sofas left, right, and centre. You, you, you get this sort of um, building in your head that you know you're. You're hated, you're, you're not wanted, you have this sort of stigma of people that run debtor against you. And that, that cycle itself was really hard to break, but being outside and meeting different peoples from different cultures and different backgrounds, it just like made me realize it's just me. It's really just me and my bad thoughts and thinking maybe in a paranoid way uh, about people and not giving them the chance. And um, e yeah, equally, like you say, it just it helped me with that mindset a little bit that people weren't actually that negative, and it was just just me being being me, basically, you know, all paranoid and horrible about it all, thinking that the world owed me, you know. You, you could be sat with these people that you've been with for years, they're your friends, they're your family, and it's all you know, and like to break away from that circle and what you know and, and can be comforting is, was and is the hardest thing, I think, for anybody. Is it under the bullet that way? Um, and like for me, the, the breakaway was like meeting people like John, let's go climbing, let's go hill walking. You know, then I'm not in the town, I'm not, associating with, and don't get me wrong, the, the people are lovely that, that I knocked about with, you know, they, they weren't criminals or anything like that, they were just bone idol like myself, <laughs> you know, and I think it was just that age, I think, you know, it, it's just that, that, I think there was that, that, was that breakaway and just trying to think, oh, actually, there's better things in life, like, like this, like, your problems just go away, don't they?